Hey, it's Jeff Ross. Life's tough right now, but we're all in this together. I mean, alone together, like I'm here and you're there because it's healthier. You know, we're all supposed to stay home. So while we're staying home, there's a lot of people that are out there saving lives. All the doctors, the nurses, the scientists, all our city leaders, all the people that deliver packages, but especially the food delivery people. Thank you for saving my life. I mean, you're real heroes and it doesn't go unappreciated. So if you're one of those people from the bottom of my heart, I wanted to say thank you. Brought to you by the Artists and Athletes Alliance, which encourages you to make a difference. Hey, it's Jeff Ross. Like and now, dispatches from the general. Shout out to all of you, my emotional support humans everywhere around the globe. Shout out to my friend Chelsea Handler, who will be joining us later in the podcast to tell us how she has been killing time in quarantine. Cool. That'll be fun. A really big shout out to perhaps the most important man in America, Dr. Fauci, from the President's Virus Task Force. He's graciously offered us a few minutes of his time to give us an update. That's coming up in just a few minutes. At the end of the show, I'll pay roast and peace tribute to Linda Tripp, who passed away this week. She was best known for her role in the Monica Lewinsky scandal and her role in Harry and the Hendersons. <laughs> Shout out to all the Bumping Mics fans. Our tour dates have been rescheduled. Look that up at roastmastergeneral.com. And of course, I'm shouting out all of you. The listeners, my friends, my fans, my family, the Eshes, I worry about you. Do you worry about me? I hope you're all staying away from the germs. People used to be so polite. If someone sneezed, we'd say, God bless you. Now if someone sneezes, we say, Jesus Christ, get the fuck away from me. <laughs> I'm paranoid. If someone sneezes over FaceTime, I hang up. Nobody's shaking hands anymore. Even my dog refuses to give me his paw. And when you go to the bank, everyone there looks like they're robbing the place. I'm holding up fine. Don't worry. But this virus is heartbreaking for so many people. Remember, folks, the five stages of grief are denial, anger, bargaining, depression, and acceptance. Or as our president calls it, a press briefing. America, I'm fighting the war against COVID-19 the same way Donald Trump fought the Vietnam War. Safely sheltered at home. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's start the show. it out loud calling all eshes it's thick skin with jeff ross we are on a motherfucking roll that's right buddy feeling good got dr fauci and chelsea handler on the show today it's huge man huge show huge show um it's great to see you ed um how is the quarantining going over at your place? It's going well. It's going well. I've I've gotten a little too used to having bandanas around my neck, but <laughs> I know we all look so villainous. Yeah. <laughs> um, I was hoping you would. You know, you're so good at this. I mean, you you, you grew up in Florida, hurricane country. Made for it. One would You've been say. giving me so many great quarantine tips, and mm -hmm. if you would just have you been washing your feet. <laughs> <laughs> What song do I have to sing while I wash my feet? Uh, one Little Engine. <laughs> All right, I'm going to start washing my feet. Anything else? Uh, well, here's one. Uh, your stimulus package is coming in. And here's, are you oh, ready? it sure is. Uh, yeah, but <laughs> it would, you take your stimulus package and you buy a gun. I got my girlfriend a stimulus package and it arrives in a couple of weeks. And... Uh, <laughs> It runs on batteries. <laughs> What's his name? It's shaped like <laughs> a big dildo. 
Well, if you buy a gun with your stimulus package, sure, you could take that money and you can use it for groceries, but you can get free groceries forever with a gun. Oh, yeah. That's very, that was, that's a good investment. It's very Florida. I remember when George Bush gave us our, uh, our, our $1,000. Remember that? Yeah. He gave everyone a thousand bucks. Right. I used it to get a to get a gun. It was on sale. I couldn't turn it down. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was wow. very American of me and stupid as a Where's teenager. Where's that gun now? Um, it is in Tallahassee. It is in Tallahassee. I, I got rid of it before I moved to New York. Okay. Well. I talked to the guy recently. Everything's fine. He's a he's a redneck and it sits in his uh, gun vault and everything's totally fine. A redneck with a gun vault. <laughs> <laughs> he's oh, <my>. ready. <laughs> Well, uh, thank you. Thank you for coming into the bunker. We are safe, safe distance apart from one another. We need, you know, I love talking to my friends. I've been checking in with people constantly. If someone texts me, uh, I FaceTime them back because I just think it's an important time. Everyone's in quarantine. It's easy to dip into despair. So um, I've been needing cheering up. I've been calling my comedy friends to cheer me up. And it's been helpful. It's been, it's like a recharge for me. Yeah. And I'm from Jersey. She's from Jersey. She's hilarious. She's a best-selling author. She's a TV star. Um, and she's, she's just an incredible woman. Chelsea Handler. Let's get her on the line to cheer me up. Hey, sweetheart. Oh, is that you? Oh, yes, honey. It's me. How are you? Oh, Chelsea Joy, thank you for letting me call you and say hi. I love to get a call from you. I'm glad that you didn't FaceTime me, though. That's so annoying. I just figured I'd catch you naked in the bathtub. No, 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 no. I don't. Yeah, that was a few days ago. I'm dressed now. The image in my head is that you're always naked in your house. And I must admit, I, I too, have not worn a bra in weeks and I walk around my house with a t-shirt and no pants like Elmer Fudd or some cartoon character uh, another pig Porky Pig I dress like Porky Pig your girlfriend must love that that's such a hot look <laughs> um, you know we get turned on by weird things over here up in the uh, up in the hills we I heard oh. I heard the owls I heard the owls I heard the owls having sex the other day and mating and that was kind of hot Oh, that's cute. That's such an aphrodisiac. Owls <laughs> mating. I've been calling um, friends as much as possible and checking in and getting cheered up by my, I, you know, I, I, I think of you beyond uh, being a, a, a great comedian, you're a Jersey person and I have a special connection uh, to Jersey people. I feel connected to my Jersey roots because I've been Marco Poloing uh, with my family back in Jersey. Have you tried that app? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's good for family text because even like Aunt Don and Uncle Joe can figure out how to use it. So I like it. Yeah, no, no. It's good also for like my nieces and nephews because that's the way to like keep the communication going. <laughs> because, after, you know, when you're like texting gets boring after a while, it's like you, it just drops off. Yeah. But if you Marco Polo, you can show people where you are. You know, if you're on vacation, which none of us will probably ever be again, <laughs> you can show people that you're like, oh, I'm in this part of the world. Look at this beach or whatever. And so it's a nice way to keep up to speed with people if you don't want to check Instagram 24 you know, times an hour. Yeah, there's a lot. I don't even every there, there's nothing to do. I literally use a GPS, <laughs> GPS to go from the bathroom to the kitchen the other day. Yeah, you really got to get yourself into some sort. I'm like, OK, now I'm going to read for an hour when I wake up and then I can start watching TV. <laughs> <laughs> I watched um, basically uh, two, two full seasons of The Crown in two days. Uh, <laughs> I know more about the British monarchy than I ever thought I would know. And it's um I, did you watch fauda yet fauda is awesome no and caliphate caliphate is good fauda and then yeah especially from your jewhood unorthodox you should watch i love that one that one was great yeah that was great if you like that you'll really like these this two. woman uh, a young woman escapes from her williamsburg um hasidic sect and hasidic. i've never been so turned on in my entire life it was fucking yeah. hot I get turned on by watching Andrew Cuomo's press conferences every morning. So, to, you know, there's something magical about the guy. I saw you, you. I saw women just going crazy over this guy, and 
it does occur to me that he's single and you're, I think, single. And that would mean that would mean you'd have to move to New York. I don't know if you would. Do it would that. mean not only that I would have to move to New York, that I would, but I would have to move to Albany. <laughs> That is that would be a hell of a sacrifice. I wrote a piece about I wrote an op-ed about him for Vogue and it, about my attraction to him. And knowing from my pattern of behavior, I am attracted to him right now in a big way. But it will wane as long as with the crisis waning, my attraction to him for being competent will also subside. <laughs> So I, I'm just going to ride this one out and not put too much pressure on it. And if I have a couple, you know, if I see him, I see him. You know what I mean? You're going to see him. <laughs> You're going to see him. Oh, yeah. I think I'm going to see him at some point. Um, well, you never know. Let's put it out there in the universe, spreading that. Don't you think I would just make the perfect first lady he of a needs, governor? He needs a boss chick. He needs somebody that he could look to in private for strong opinions. and He needs a who, Jersey girl. Who's well-read and is from, from his neck of the woods, the East Coast. That's right. That's You've you, been Chelsea supportive. Joy. That's you. I could see that totally <laughs> happening. I could totally <laughs> see that happening. Um, I'm sure your fans want to know, are you drinking more or are you drinking less during quarantine? No, I'm not really drinking that much. I mean, I'm just, I mean, I'm home. My sister's here with her three kids from San Francisco. They <laughs> moved in about two weeks ago. So we've all been kind of quarantining together. And I just love that. Lying. I know. Well, it was better than, you know, me. and But so they brought two dogs down with them. And so we've got and my two dogs. So it's a bit, it's a nice little family. It's so much nice. It's nice to have family around because you don't really... You know, they don't care if you're in your room watching TV or if you're down there. It's just nice. Yeah. It's so co cozy. And it's thank God she was able. She got in her car and drove down here from San Francisco like two weeks ago. So I don't know how long they'll stay, but it's uh, been pretty cozy. I mean, I don't mind staying home. I'm just horrified at what's happening to the rest of the world. And, you know, it is it, there is that, that weird, I, you know, I'm a silver linings type of person. And I always go, well, you know. Well, here's Chelsea. She's bonding with her sister and her and her family, and and I'm uh, I'm spending more time with my at home a, as a comedian. You know, to just spend time at home with my girlfriend and the dogs. We 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 got a rescue dog. Um, oh, that's about, nice. About What's a his week name? ago, her name is Rona, after Aww. Corona, and <laughs> as I got to know her. Now I just call her Nana, Nana Rona, because she's old and she has arthritis and she limps and she's blind and she smells and she she she's she's captured my heart somehow. But I have to check her pulse every three hours because she's she's old. Oh, well, that was really nice of you to not adopt an old dog. You know, they really need that love. Yeah. Well, I keep I keep threatening her if she doesn't like perk up. On I mean, your girlfriend rescued you. So <laughs> why not pay it forward? I think you're you right. in your house outfit with no pants on walking around. just. <laughs> I'm looking just... good. I've been doing yoga. I've been eating better. I've no. been trying to take care of myself. I'm not showing it off like you. Uh, you know, you got the real body like I'm. I'm, uh, you know, I'm trying my best. There's no amount of money I could show yeah, my body. I like body. to use my body these days. So you're using um, your body. I understand. You've never used it before. Now you're using your body. Well, I mean, now I like it. I'm confident with my body. I went my 20s and 30s. It was like I didn't like my body. And then I realized that I wanted to, you know, typical girl bullshit. Well, you're a confident person. And, and I think I, you know, that's something to be admired. Well, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. You're pretty confident yourself. Yoga helps, you know, like since I've been home, I, I feel like the only way to not go into a spiral of like despair, you know, we're, we're far enough in our life where we know we're going to be OK. But if you were, if I was a teenager right now and my high school graduation got canceled or my college graduation yeah. or these kids who are in the Olympics and the Olympics gets canceled. It's going to be really hard for some people not to snap out of it. And is there any, yeah. this podcast is, is called thick skin. It's about getting through life when times are hard. This is an especially a hard time for a lot of people. What do you do Chels when you're like down in the dumps? Like, is there something you turn to? Like, you know, I, I put on, I put on, um, Rodney Dangerfield on YouTube. Is there one? Is there something <laughs> that you go to? And 
I mean, yeah, it's a, it's a dark time, but I like to be optimistic too. You know, I like to just try and get the good out of it because it's clearly a big signal from mother earth to get the fuck inside and shut up, you know, like we all need to stop and sit still because nobody's really capable of doing that. I certainly am guilty of that for, you know, up until like a couple of years ago when I was like my first th real therapist, I didn't understand how to sit still. So it's difficult for a lot of people, but do I have a one thing that I go to? No. I mean, you know, you can, you know, the first week of this, I was high as a kite for seven days. I was like, okay, today I'm like, what's my schedule? Tuesday, I'll take mushrooms. Oh. On Wednesday, I'll take, on Wednesday, I'll smoke weed. On Thursday, I'll take edibles. And on Friday, I'll take THC capsules. And then I'll rotate the mushrooms back in on Saturday. Like I was like, how do we do this so that my tolerance doesn't get out of control because that's not fun to drink when you're just stuck at home. You know what I mean? Right. So that's kind of off the table. It's more fun to be stoned. But then I got so stoned after the first two weeks. I'm like, I'm so stupid and brain dead. <laughs> like I was trying to read books, you know, like I love to read. That's my other escape. But I couldn't even, I was reading paragraphs like three, four, five times. I'm like, what is wrong with you? I'm like, oh, you're fucking stoned. <laughs> that's what's wrong with you. You've been stoned for a week and a half. So of course you can't finish this fucking book. So then I was like, all right, you got to chill out and you can't really smoke weed right now. I mean, you can, but it's advisable not to, you know, because of the coronavirus attacks that. your lungs. I so like I'm, tr I'm trying not to smoke, you know, I'm not perfect, but I'm smoking a lot less than I was. And I'm trying just to take edibles. Uh -huh. But yeah, I had to dial that back. So the first two weeks were like spring break in my house with, with no one else, <laughs> which is kind of the way I love it. COVID break. Um, <laughs> I'd go to the den and turn on the fire. Then I'd go to the next room and turn on. I'm like, let me experience life by myself in my house. It was pretty stupid. And so now I, um, yeah, now I think I just try to get out of my head you know when you get depressed and you feel that way I find myself getting that feeling when I spend too much on time online oh, or on Instagram right. or on any of that shit whenever you're looking at other people too much you forget to look at within and I don't mean that in like I do mean that in a spiritual sense but I mean that like as a practice in a practical sense as well like you have to be cool with what you're doing and have and believe in yourself and you can't let things get you down or events get you down because all you can control is the way you react to them, you know? Mm -hmm. And so I try to really be conscientious about my reaction to things and not to overreact because I've done that for, you know, my whole life and not to underreact to just be like, okay, this is the situation. Now we have to adapt. i clearly, I'm not going to, I'm you know, I'm not suffering. How can I help other people who are, and what more can I do? Cause you never feel like you're doing enough, you know, when uh -huh. you, you just feel like a loser sometimes, no matter how many times you post about something or how much money you donate, you're like, I should be doing more. You see these healthcare workers and you're like, I want to be like that. Right. Out there in the real, in the world. But you know what? Everybody has their place. And if your posts mean so much, you have millions of people who listen to you and you, you know, you have money to spend on, on this stuff. I admire that too. That's a big, not a lot of people doing that. A lot of people hiding behind their... <sighs> their posts and they're not living up to it and you do you're a good person i see you at political stuff i see you talking uh out about stuff you care about you're not just there to get the laughs and take the check you're like you know you're you're a first class chelsea joy handler you made me laugh i needed that today i really well, needed that today. oh god well you always make me laugh remember the time i came over to your apartment and we did fitzsimmons came over and we took mushrooms and then <laughs> you're like let's go to the improv <laughs> And I wasn't doing stand up at that time. Right. And you're like, yeah, just get, let's get up on stage. I'm like, I'm not getting on stage. I'm like, I'll go to the improv, but I have nothing to say. And you're like, I'll go on stage. And I was like, great, perfect. And you left in the middle of my <laughs> set. You got <laughs> motherfucker. <laughs> You motherfucker. I was like, she's so wasted. Where is she? I called you. You disappeared. And then you called me like four hours later. You you wandered off on mushrooms. And while I was on stage on mushrooms, and um, we found our way back to each other on yeah, the phone. you were killing it on you were killing it on mushrooms and then i was like i gotta get out of here because i was so high i was like this is ridiculous and i realized you weren't gonna get off the stage anytime soon so i was basically by myself well i was with fitzsimmons but that's sometimes like being alone so i went home and i woke up the next morning to a marco polo from sarah silverman going hey i'm just checking on you jeffrey said <laughs> jeffrey said you were at the improv high on mushrooms and left during his set and everyone was really concerned <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> oh, we have to do that more often. Oh man, that's it, man. That's the that's that's what I want to do when I get freed from quarantine. I want to get together with you and and do drugs. Yeah, you least... guys are gonna have to come over and we'll do some mushrooms at my house. It's fun at my house because I have this nice hillside that you can stare at for about four hours. Oh, that's great. Well, hopefully your fucking family will be gone by then. Yeah, I ho- yeah, hopefully. No, it's nice that you're, your that sake. you're all you're. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice that you're. They're all uh, that you're all quarantining as a crew. I love that. That makes me so happy. Um, yeah, how are you doing during the quarantine? How are you and your girlfriend getting along? You know, spending this, all this is one-on-one time together. I feel like this has been a, a a great time for us. Really, really good. Like if we haven't like physically abused each other by now, if we haven't, she hasn't hit me by now. She never will. And. And and I, I think I got a good one here. It's going really well. That's great. She's been she's been taking care of me, and I've been taking care of her, and 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 two dogs, and and you know, I'm thirty year thirty thirty one years I've been doing comedy, and and this is the first year my my anniversary was last week of doing comedy, and and I first time ever I wasn't on stage, and. And it wasn't, it, I was okay about it, you know, I, these these kind of breaks, these unexpected turns remind you that, you know, life is good, you have your health, like, I stand-up doesn't own me, I own it, I'm okay, I'm feeling good, even though the world is, is on fire, you know, I'm thanking my lucky stars that I'm healthy and, and hanging with somebody who doesn't make me too crazy. Sometimes with all these deaths that are happening, not sometimes, when death becomes so prevalent, it just loses, you know, it almost loses its impact. And it's, you know, and every day, so many people in this country are dying. And it's like so important for us to remember that's like, um, and not to forget, you know, to be so grateful and to stay the fuck home because of that, you know, to make the sacrifice for the people who can't. Yeah, well said. You know, we've lost more people than we lost in wars. We lost more people every day. And, and, you know, I feel like it's our responsibility, you know, not just, not just to each other, but to everybody we talk to, not just comedians, funny people. If you're funny, you have an obligation to make the people you're quarantined with laugh. If you're a comedian, you have an obligation to, to, to continue to reach out to people and try to cheer them up. And that's what Chelsea Handler did for me and all of us today at Thick Skin. Um, Chels, um, I hope you get back on stage soon. I really miss seeing you do stand-up. Yeah, I am doing stand-up. I have a special coming out. Uh, well, I was going to tape it during this time, so we'll see. But I'll tape it this year and it'll come out. Um, I, yeah, I started doing stand-up again, just like you told me to. I love it. That's awesome. Yeah. I can't wait to see that. I can't wait to see you ripping it up, Jersey style. All right, baby. I miss you and I love you. Baruch atah, Shabbat shalom. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of love, Chelsea. I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Bye, Jeffrey. You have the most impressive uh, contact list on your phone that I think. <laughs> well, the, you had the coronavirus patient guy, so. <laughs> if we need a celebrity, Jeff books the show. If we need somebody with coronavirus, Ed books the show. <laughs> um, I've been doing everything I can to try to stay healthy and... I didn't wait all this time in quarantine to get the virus. I'm being super careful. I'm calling in every single favor possible, and I want to get the best advice. I begged and I pleaded the CDC and all these uh, officials to let me get the straight answers from the man himself. Um, Let's try to get him on the line, Ed. Um, This is the... Uh, head doctor on President Trump's coronavirus task force, Dr. Fauci. Um, He is on TV every day doing these live briefings with the president. I'm really curious what he's going to tell us uh, is happening with this virus. Dr. Fauci, thank you for taking the time to talk to us. Jeff, ask away what would you like to talk about? Um, Dr. Fauci, uh, pressing question. Everybody wants to know. The, the, The president retweeted a hashtag fire Fauci. You really think he's thinking of firing you? No, well, well, you I mean, what do you think? I mean, do you think I want to be hanging around with this putz? 
I'm the, I'm the, listen, I'm the only person in America that hasn't seen Tiger King. I don't know who this guy is. <laughs> You're working 24 hours a day. I get it. I, I can't do it anymore. Hmm. You know, Easter just came and went, Dr. Fauci. When do you think people will go back to temple and church and mosque and so on? Uh, hopefully uh, never. That's when they're, that's because, you know what? If there is a God, they really screwed this up. <laughs> Whoever it is, a woman or a man or a, or that, uh, that light thing in the background on Star Trek. Who knows? I don't care. It's, 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 uh, they, they screwed up. They screwed up on this one and uh, everybody's uh, hurting. Mm. It's a tough thing. I noticed you're up at those daily briefings close by the president. Has he tried to shake your hand or is he? You, you, do you know something? This is the thing. The guy, I mean, he shakes everybody else's hand, but he doesn't shake mine. He hasn't done it once. But I'm pretty sure it's because he's a schmuck, not because he's practicing social distancing. That's why. I can't believe it. It's unbelievable. Social distancing. A lot of people like it. Germaphobes love it. Do, do you think some people are benefiting from social distancing? You know, you know what, Jeffrey? I think that the person that is benefiting the most from social distancing is Ivanka. <laughs> you know why? Because now her and the father are there forced to sleep in separate beds. <laughs> wow. Um, I have concert tickets coming up. Uh, I'm gonna go see. Oh, you going to a con? Oh, you who? You going to a concert? I hope. Oh, that's very nice. Who are you going to see? Well, just coming up soon, May 29th, Hall and Oates at the Hollywood Bowl. Will it be safe to go? Well, not if you want to look cool. Holy <laughs> Christ! What kind of who the, who decided for you to go to Hall and Oates? You might. I mean, listen. You might as well stay at home and spread mayonnaise on your balls. That's just a. I mean, why would you go? To see that, I mean, first of all, Daryl Hall always over singing. John Hopes always under singing. Whoa, so they're going back and forth, and it's just a, uh, nah, nah, it doesn't, it does, no, not if you, but listen, I tell you what, honestly, though, I'd say we're lucky yeah. if all of us make it to that concert. I'm, we're lucky. Keep your fingers crossed. Hopefully that Thank happens. Thank you. That's good advice. Good to think positive, Dr. Fauci. Um, I did hear hear someone ask you in one of your interviews how you're holding up and dr fauci you said you're running on fumes but the fumes are doing okay i love that i'm wondering oh. now it's a week later uh how are the fumes doing now dr Fauci? well the, the fumes the fumes are well luckily paint thinner it can be a stimulant when you mix it with adderall and cocaine <laughs> i have wonderful hookups i have the best hookups it's uh i get the pure stuff so it's very good. It, I'm, I'm, I'm all right. I'm burning the burning the candle at six ends. Wow. Well, it's good to know that there's a real doctor. You're a real patriot, Dr. Fauci. Are you worried about the economy? Are you worried uh, people resort to rioting if things get really bad? Well, the, 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 the thing is, is that I talked to, um, I talked to, to Treasury Secretary, who's the guy, the movie producer? Munch, oh, yeah, Munch. Steven. Yeah, Steve Mnuchin. God, I hate that name. I hate that name. Mnuchin. That sounds like that sounds like somebody you punch and then you take his lunch money. Mnuchin. Mnuchin. Anyway, that, yeah. that, that you know what? I talked to him the other day, yeah. and he said he said he's pretty sure that if people rioted, you know, that there's pretty much nothing left to steal. So. Uh, you know, Ooh. enjoy yourself. There, uh, you know, there's just going to be a lot of punching and uh, not a lot of taking home kidney beans because that's economy. what's left. The economy. That's what's left in the stores: kidney beans. Whew. Dr. Fauci, I mean, this is must be so much stress on you. How do you unwind when you get home? Well, you, you know, I'm Italian, so uh, I, I fill a nice tall glass uh, with the warm limoncello. And then uh, take a nice cocktail of pre-approved FDA drugs. <laughs> well, that, you know, that and then and Seinfeld. Seinfeld. Love the, you know, I love the Seinfeld. You know what? Um, it's good to know that, that, that you have a sense of humor, Dr. Fauci. You're very reassuring. Dr. Fauci, what do you miss the most since going into lockdown? What do I miss the most since going into lockdown? Hey, my dogs. Your dogs. Oh, yes. okay. We're both dog lovers. 
Well, oh, 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 I'm sorry. By dogs, I meant street gang. I, I'm, a, I'm a crip, but only because I believe in donating blood. <laughs> oh, Dr. You know Fauci. how I roll. You're... You know how I roll. I like it, Chocolate, Dr. Fauci. Chocolate City, son. Chocolate City. <laughs> How much toilet paper do you think I need to keep on hand, Dr. Fauci? At a bare minimum with the toilet paper, 250 rolls. 250, that's 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 too much. Yeah, that's too much? Jeff, have you seen the size of your ass? <laughs> that's not too much. That's just enough. I don't ask you for a week. Dr. Fauci, what makes a better face mask, a bra or underpants? <laughs> Listen, I, I yeah, you know, you know, I I find that bras uh, are more cozy than underpants. Plus, women are still wearing underpants, but bras are readily available right now. So, uh, my wife's breasts are sagging so low she can nurse a snake. <laughs> How about that? Oh man, you made me feel a lot better. I, I you, you really oh, that's did. very good. You you, you, you sort of. Cheered me up a little bit here, Doctor Fauci. I can't lie. I, miss, I really miss my family. Will I be able to see them again soon? Uh, well, you know, we we found that most uh, Americans don't don't want to go back to seeing their families. So, the truth is, the virus has been done for three weeks. I just need a break for my wife, <laughs> <laughs> Doctor Fauci. Oh. Well, thank you for taking the time to talk to us about COVID nineteen. No, oh, absolutely. It is my pleasure, Jeff. You know, if, if the rest of America was as informed as you are, we'd all be dead. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, see you at the Olympics. Thank I gotta you. go. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Fauci. What a good oh, guy. Oh, you're welcome. What a good, you're welcome. good guy. What a good you guy. You take care. Bye bye. Love you, Bye-bye. Dr. Fauci. Love you, Dr. Fauci. Keep up the good work, my good okay. sir. Okay. Okay. Well, all right. Dr. Fauci, telling it like it is. Unbelievable. Woo! Yeah. Ed, there's a lot going on in the world. I think it's time for Touchy Subjects. Touchy Subjects. What do you got, buddy? Oh, good. We got a, we got a positive story out of New York. I appreciate this. We okay. need it right now. Great. New York's been under a lot of terrible, terrible darkness. Something good happened in New York? Yeah. A blind man fell onto the subway tracks. I like it already. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and he escaped an oncoming train down in Prospect Park. Wow. Can you believe that? He tumbled onto the, the G train tracks, uh, but in a park, a park, a Prospect Park station at 15th Street. And uh, when the train was coming, there's this little area in between. Right. Uh, like right, right below that you can kind of sneak in. And he knew about it, even though he's blind. And he kind of dipped in that little area when the train came by and... He lived. He didn't wow. even. Well, he, he barely hurt. Barely hurt. Really? Yeah. No. A blind man fell on the subway tracks, and lit. it was the G train. Yeah, and I. So yeah. he was probably. He could have been there for hours. Nobody would have. <laughs> he wouldn't have gotten run over. That fucking train never shows up. Eyewitnesses say the train's conductor also deserves praise for quickly stopping the train as soon as uh, she spotted the man. Uh, the power. No, on the no tra- shit, lady. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Wow. Yeah, no, I love this. This is so nice, man. And then he came out of the subway and he started playing piano. It was amazing. Yeah. <laughs> all right. That's great. Good news out of New York. Yeah. This... Shout out to all the New Yorkers, man. I know I know what you're going through. Yeah. This never would have happened to him before, usually. Uh, the stench of other passengers lets him know when to stop walking. <laughs> <laughs> What's next? All right. This is out of CNN. It's a zonkey. A what? A zonkey, Jeff. A what? A zonkey. <laughs> a zebra gives birth to a rare baby after mating with a donkey. Is that allowed? I don't think it's allowed, but it happens. This isn't the first Aren't time. zebras already mixed race? <laughs> a zonkey, z- zebra, donkey. Yes, a zebra at the Chai. Ulu Hills National Park in Kenya was recently found with a peculiar looking foal by her side. It had stripes, but they weren't dark and barely covered her body. It's the, the, if you look at it, 
it's uh it looks like a zebra it looks like a donkey oh wow it's brown but its legs are striped wow yeah yeah, that is interesting huh yeah 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 it looks like a mule that didn't go through the printer or something (laughs) i don't know uh maybe that's the future you know like freak shows were you know a century ago human freak shows now maybe it's going to be animal hybrid freaky weird stuff yeah man you bring it down to tijuana people could take their picture with it it'll be great uh you know i'm glad they called it a zonky and not a zool oh yeah yeah zool sounds like something you do to yourself after eating too much ZD. i zooled all over the <laughs> all over the place what's next uh here's here's a really sweet story uh this is our only uh coronavirus story a 93 year old woman with an I need more beer sign gets her wish. What? Yeah, this is from ABC. Uh, is in Pittsburgh. Uh, this is, it went viral. Her, uh, her grandchildren came to go see her, and she held up a sign. It said, I need beer through the window, and she was holding a Coors Light. The kids put it on uh, Darren Roval, put it on uh, social media, and it went viral. And Coors Light saw it and sent the woman 10 cases of beer. Wow. Yeah. It's probably the only thing keeping her alive. <laughs> Ten, all that free beer for 90. How old is she? 93 years old. Now maybe her husband will come back. <laughs> well, she says she stays healthy by drinking one beer every night before she goes to bed. Really? Yeah. Wow. There yeah. you go. She was on her last 12 beers when she made the sign. <laughs> <laughs> <Jesus>. <laughs> Now all the neighborhood kids are hanging out outside her house. Yeah. Know. That's great. That's great. Well, shout out to all the people in quarantine who are <laughs> drinking, smoking. Uh, that includes us, Chelsea Handler, yeah. the whole world. 420s on Monday. 420s coming up. Um, shout out to all the smokers, man. Um, we'll have to do a 420... Uh, this whole month is really 420. It's April in the year 2020. It's very convenient that we're all locked inside of our house with unlimited cartoons. <laughs> <laughs> crazy, crazy times. The man. only thing you could still buy is pizza. <laughs> so, <it's laughs> is there pizza around? I mean, I got a pizza yesterday. It was very. Oh, nice. you ordered a pizza. I treated. I treated me uh, and Julie. So pizza is a still essential. Pizza is still essential. No ho pizza. I might Thanks. have to order a pizza tonight. <sighs> Oh, it's so good. It makes you appreciate food, this whole thing. It really does. I ordered some takeout on Saturday for me and Julie. Because yeah. we're trying not to do it every night. Yeah. But we did some on Saturday, and I, it sucked. I was so... I was the takeout so, wasn't good? It was awful. And I was like, man. Oh, man. I was just like, it's like it's, I get so few luxuries in life right now. Oh, here's my luxury. Hi, Luna. Doggy just came in. I heard her banging on the door. Luna she doesn't like when it. we do the podcast without her. Oh, she I doesn't understand. know why we would lock her out of the podcast room. This She's is... the star of the show. She bit me today by accident, though. You were I holding meat in front of her face. I was. I was. It's not her <laughs> fault. It's yeah. my fault. Well, now that she has to compete with your dog and the rescue dog, <laughs> she's she's not like eating out of your palm anymore. Now she's fighting for every scrap. Aww, she's so sweet. She's a princess. She's been a good, good friend to Rona. Is it Rona or Nana? Nana Rona. Nana Rona. I yeah. like it. Her name's Rona, but we call her Nana. It makes sense. She's so old. I love her, though. We got this rescue dog, and uh, boy, this dog <laughs> has got arthritis. It's blind. It's uh, afraid of the stairs. It's afraid of confined spaces. If I try to pet her while she's sleeping, she flinches because she's scared. And uh, I don't know. I just have to punch her in the face. I definitely have to. I definitely checked her to see if she was alive when I walked in because I was like, "It's like Rona, Rona." But I realized like you just named her, so she doesn't know her name. No, she doesn't it, know her name. Yes, <laughs> I've said every dog name to her possible, and I can't get her to respond to anything. So I had to give her a new name. So mm-hmm. she's really sweet. She's really, really sweet. I got her a bed and a collar, and that made her very, very happy. Um, and she's doing a lot better. She's on painkillers and, uh, she's going to be all right. I think she's going to be all right. I think I'm not going to give, I don't think I can give her up. Although 
you know, she has problems. Doo doo sticks to her when she walks back in, and you got to really watch out oh, for she's her. She's dingleberries. And she, it's worse than dingleberries. It's, yeah. it's, it's D- dingle-, dingle melons. <laughs> <laughs> she gets dingle me- melons. Dingle, dingle, dingle melons. She's huge. She's 100 pounds, man. D- By the way, dingle melons is also Ed's porn name. <laughs> But yeah, Nana Rona, she's doing well. Uh, shout out to the people at Animal Hope and Wellness who helped us find her, rescue her, whatever you want to call it. Nana Rona lives and thrives in the world, unlike a woman named Linda Tripp. That's right. Passed away. It's time for Roast in Peace. During this week of madness, Linda Tripp passed away. Linda was an American civil servant who played a prominent role in the Bill Clinton Monica Lewinsky scandal. Linda, if you remember, secretly recorded Monica Lewinsky's explicit phone conversations about her affair with President Clinton. John Goodman played her on SNL, and get this, uh, when I was learning about her today, in her later years, she ran a Christmas store in oh, Virginia with her husband. That's nice. It was nice. All right, Linda Tripp. How did she pass away? She tripped, of course. (laughs) You might remember Linda as the woman from the Clinton scandal that wouldn't put out. (laughs) They called Linda Tripp a whistleblower, but that's just because she looked like a gym teacher. (laughs) (laughs) She betrayed her friend's trust. She was like Benedict Arnold if she shopped at Lane Bryant. (laughs) Linda Tripp. In recent years, Linda owned a Christmas-themed store in Virginia. It was called Hanukkah Sucks Dick. (laughs) Roast in peace. (laughs) Histories. Linda Tripp. Linda Tripp. All right, well, I don't know how to segue out of that. Life is short, folks. Don't worry, we're getting through it together. When this is all over, I can't wait to touch all of your faces. <laughs> I'm just going to be touching faces like Stevie Wonder at a fucking party. <laughs> I'm going to be touching face like a motherfucker. Uh, touching face, and you're also going to be bumping mics, my friend. Oh, okay. You're hitting the road. They rescheduled a lot of these dates, huh? They really did. They're all up on uh, RoastmasterGeneral.com. That's also where you go get your emotional support human shirt, which we are still selling. I mean, these should be selling like crazy right now, by the way. Yes. They look like emotional support, you know, dog vests, but they're t-shirts for human beings. They say the name of the podcast, Mm -hmm. Thick Skin with Jeff Ross on the back. They say emotional support human on the front. We're all emotional support humans right now. Yes, ashes. Everyone's their own emotional support team. You can also pick up, I'm offended by people who are always offended, baseball tees and mugs. <laughs> That's right. Do you want to list the dates or you just want people to go to the website? Come on out. We're going to reschedule these bumping mic shows for mostly in August. Yeah. Atlantic City, Waukegan, Illinois, Des Moines, Iowa, Kansas City, Missouri, Morristown, New Jersey. We're coming, baby. Munhall, Pennsylvania, Tarrytown, New York. Santa Inez, California at the Chumash Casino. But it all kicks off, hopefully, 4th of July weekend in Las Vegas. Man, I really hope this works out. RoastmasterGeneral.com for all the information. I love going on stage. I can't wait to bring it. Believe me, I am saving it up. And you know David Tell must have one million fucking jokes that he he has, has no audience to tell him to right now. So... Dude, all that guy does is write jokes. And now that he can't leave the house. Fuck. Yeah. Uh, you know, someone actually sent me a picture of the Bumping Mike's vinyl. They, uh, oh, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So people are buying it, man. I love that. Yeah. Still an essential item on Amazon. Really? Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you been doing any cameos? Yeah, sure. It's uh, fun. They're the best, man. It's the best way to wish someone a happy birthday during this fucking time. Yeah, I'm doing a big charity uh, run of cameos this weekend. Uh, Not this weekend. uh, In a couple days with with Gilbert Gottfried, we're going to have some fun. Oh, that's amazing. We're going to go live together and do some joint cameos. Hell yeah. 
uh, rate and review our show on iTunes and you can subscribe to our YouTube page. Or if you just want to talk to us and say hi, email us at thickskinwithjeffross at gmail.com. Twitter at thickskincast. Instagram, thickskinwithjeffross. Real Jeffrey Ross on Twitter and Instagram. I'm at eddytunes underscore ed- on Twitter, eddytunes on Instagram. And I got another podcast you might want to check out. It's called The Brighter Side with Amber Nelson and our producer, Eddie Ewing, on the Last Podcast Network. Shout out to the Last Podcast Network. Yeah, man. They used Cameo. They just put out a book this week, and they used a bunch of... They bought Cameos and had them uh, promote the book. They had Corey Feldman oh, that's great. promote the book. And, uh, yeah, somebody somebody uh, uh, posted a Cameo of me that they mashed up of me, Lisa Lampanelli, and Gilbert Gottfried all roasting the same guy. Oh, that's amazing. It's really fun what people are doing with the Cameos. And You uh, could have an all-star roast. Right, it is crazy. Yeah. You really could put that together for like 500 bucks <laughs> <laughs> i like i like doing them for the fans man because people really appreciate them and they share them and they remember it forever and i only roast the ones i love i love my fans um i want to give a special shout out to my oldest buddy in comedy one of the funniest motherfuckers in the world john dimaggio uh as dr fauci today you know him as Bender on Futurama, King Zog on Disenchantment on Netflix. What's the other show he's on? The 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 game. Oh, he's a uh, Gears Five, a very <laughs> popular uh, war video game. He's the he's the. <laughs> he can play anybody. He can fucking play anybody. I love that guy. He is... My first writing job ever in, in show business was writing for John DiMaggio, Red Johnny and the Round Guy. Yeah. Uh, well, follow John the John DiMaggio on Instagram. D i m a g g i o. Um, all right. Well, I think that's about it, folks. We will be back again in the bunker, quarantining. Thick skin with Jeff Ross. Um, last time we went out with Buddy Hackett. Any suggestions? I mean, cheering you up. How about a little Rodney this time? Hey, I'll Rodney. tell you. Taking us out this time, the late, great Rodney Dangerfield. I was talking to my doctor. You know my doctor, Dr. Vinnie Boombach. You know my doctor? Yeah. Yeah. Well, he told me last week in his office he got six cases of VD. I mean, he's all right now, you know. <laughs> and my doctor, he don't help either. He told me to run five miles a day for two weeks. I called him up. I said, Doc, I'm 70 miles from my house. <laughs> I'll tell you about trouble. I got the wrong doctor. You know my doctor, Dr. Vinnie Boombach. You know my doctor? What a doctor. Are you kidding me? What a doctor. I called him up. I told him I had diarrhea. He put me on hold. Oh, he's a strange doctor. Strange doctor. Oh, are you kidding? I asked him if my heart was strong enough to sex. He told me not if I join in, you know? <laughs> I'll tell you my trouble. I got the wrong doctor. You know my doctor, Dr. Vinnie Boombach. You know my doctor? What a doctor. I called him last week. I told him, Doc, I swallowed a bottle of sleeping pills. He told me to have a few drinks and get some rest. Life's not easy. Not easy. You not can't easy. trust doctors either. They're all mixed up. You, you really kidding? think so, huh? Uh, my proctologist used to be a photographer. Yeah. Hey, he took x-rays, told me to bend over and say cheese. <laughs> uh, one time I saw him, he gave me sleeping pills. He told me to take them whenever I wake up. When you know my doctor, Dr. Vinnie Boombach. You know my doctor? But that a way, but a doctor. He's really mixed up. He grabbed my knee and told me to cough and hit me in the balls with a hammer. So when I was born, after the doctor cut the cord, he hung himself. I tell you, my problem is I drink too much, way too much. Yeah. I get my doctor a urine specimen. There was an olive in it.